Imagine standing on your porch and watching the sky turn green, then hearing what sounds like a freight train barreling straight at you. Only, there's no train or truck in sight. That's not the plot of a disaster movie. It's real life for tens of thousands of Americans every year. Tornadoes are one of nature's most violent forces. Savage spirals of wind that can rip a house to splinters, hurl 18 wheelers like crumpled soda cans and wipe entire towns off the map in under 60 seconds. Each year, over 1,200 tornadoes strike the United States, more than any other country in the world. Some spin for just a few minutes, others carve paths of destruction that stretch for over 200 miles. One twister can release more energy than a nuclear bomb, but can vanish faster than common sense in Washington. In this video, we're diving headfirst into the world of tornadoes, their ancient origins, the raw mechanics behind their formation, the really big ones, and how climate change might be cranking up their fury. Oh, and we'll explore the cutting edge tech that might just keep you alive the next time the sky decides to unleash Armageddon. Wait, before we go too far, please take a sec to like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the growth of the channel and our ability to replace mistruths and alternative facts with objectively true facts. You like learning and we like teaching, so do it. Please, thank you. Now back to Twisters. Tornadoes don't materialize out of thin air. They begin with one of the most complex and dangerous weather systems on the planet, a supercell. This isn't your garden variety thunderstorm. A supercell is a rotating, highly organized system, essentially an atmospheric engine built for destruction. The setup starts quietly, almost invisibly. Cool, dry air sinks down from the Rocky Mountains. Meanwhile, warm, moisture-rich air rises from the Gulf of Mexico. When these air masses meet, the atmosphere becomes unstable. High above, winds are blowing in one direction. Near the surface, they're moving in another. That difference, known as wind shear, creates a subtle but powerful effect. It causes the air to begin spinning horizontally, like an invisible roll of carpet unfurling across the sky. Then comes the updraft. As warm air rushes upward through the storm, it grabs hold of that horizontal spin and tilts it vertical. This forms a mesocyclone, a broad, rotating column of air embedded within the storm. It's not yet a tornado, but it's the mechanism that makes one possible. And if conditions align, enough moisture, enough lift, enough instability, that rotation tightens. The storm focuses its energy downward. A funnel cloud forms, and if it reaches the ground, it's officially a tornado. Not spontaneous chaos, just highly organized physics with devastating consequences. These consequences have been haunting Earth for millions of years, long before humans ever built houses to be ripped apart. Fossilized soil layers, known as paleosols, show signs of intense wind disturbances dating back to the Cretaceous period, suggesting that tornadoes likely tore through prehistoric landscapes alongside the dinosaurs. In fact, researchers have identified ancient sediment patterns, such as disrupted grain alignment and unusual debris layering that strongly resemble the aftermath of modern tornadoes. So if you ever find yourself caught in one, just remember, you're part of a very long, very unlucky tradition. Although tornadoes have likely existed since the age of dinosaurs, it wasn't until the 1950s that we began systematically tracking them. This leap came courtesy of radar technology refined during World War II. Before that, tornado detection was little more than hearsay. Today, we rely on Doppler radar, satellite imaging and mobile storm chasers who collect high-resolution, real-time data from inside the storm itself. These tools allow meteorologists to issue warnings with greater accuracy and lead time, often saving lives. What truly stunned scientists wasn't just the chaos tornadoes unleash, but the raw physics behind them. 
Peak wind speeds inside an EF5 tornado can exceed 300 miles per hour, strong enough to rip pavement from roads, hurl vehicles like confetti, and level reinforced structures. It redefined our understanding of atmospheric energy. In short, nature doesn't just throw a tantrum, it engineers monsters. The strength of that monster is measured using the enhanced Fujita scale, often shortened to the EF scale, a system developed in 2007 to update the original Fujita scale, introduced in 1971 by meteorologist Dr. Tetsuya Ted Fujita. The EF scale doesn't just look at wind speed, it also considers the type and degree of damage to buildings, trees, and infrastructure to estimate the power of the storm. The scale ranges from EF0 to EF5. An EF0 is like a grumpy windstorm, gusts topping 85 miles per hour, enough to snap branches and toss around lawn furniture. But each step up the scale reflects a dramatic leap in destructive potential. EF3s can tear roofs off houses, EF4s can flatten entire neighborhoods, and EF5s, those are in a league of their own. With wind speeds over 200 miles per hour, they erase everything in their path. Unlike earthquakes, which increase in power logarithmically, that is, each whole number step up represents about 10 times more energy released than the one before. Tornadoes don't follow a strict formula, but each EF level still signals a steep and sobering escalation in severity. Think of the EF scale not as a gentle slope, but as a staircase where each step is 10 feet taller than the last and on fire. Let's take a hard look at the storms that rewrote the rules and shattered entire communities. A monster tornado visiting the Midwest did just that. Not just your average roof-ripping twister, but the kind that rewrites history books. The Tri-State Tornado of March 18th. 1925 still holds the grim title of the deadliest tornado in US history. It wasn't just a tornado. It was a relentless monster that chewed through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana like a buzzsaw on a warpath. Packing winds estimated at over 300 miles per hour, this EF-5 behemoth stayed on the ground for an unimaginable 219 miles, flattening everything in its path for over three and a half hours. But here's what made it truly terrifying. It moved fast, really fast. Most tornadoes crawl along at 30 or 40 miles per hour. This one was barreling across the countryside at speeds reaching 60 to 73 miles per hour. That's highway speed for a swirling column of death. Towns had barely minutes, sometimes seconds, to react. It struck so suddenly and moved so swiftly that traditional warnings, what few existed in 1925, were virtually useless. Entire towns like Murfreesboro and Gorham Illinois were reduced to rubble. Schools, homes, train depots, gone in seconds. By the time the skies cleared, 695 people were dead, over 2,000 injured, and more than 15,000 left homeless. There were no sirens, no Doppler radar, no TV weathermen standing in front of swirling graphics, just a sudden black funnel that dropped from the sky and erased entire communities. Murfreesboro alone saw 234 people killed, still the highest tornado death toll in a single city in American history. Eyewitnesses described a swirling wall of debris that looked like boiling ink tearing through the landscape, adjusted for inflation. The damage totaled more than $2.2 billion, but no dollar figure can capture the horror or heartbreak it left behind. It wasn't just the scale of destruction that stunned the nation, it was the sheer speed and stealth a perfect storm of power, pace, and silence. Many victims never even had time to look up. Then, there's the Joplin tornado of 2011. Unlike the tri-state storm, this one didn't strike without warning, but it still hit like a sledgehammer. On May 22nd, a monstrous EF-5 tornado touched down on the western edge of Joplin, Missouri. Within minutes, it grew into a mile-wide vortex of devastation, with winds topping 200 miles per hour. It didn't meander. It barreled straight through the heart of the city. Neighborhoods were shredded to splinters. St. John's Regional Medical Center, Joplin's main hospital, 
was so badly damaged it had to be abandoned at a time it was desperately needed. Schools, businesses, fire stations, entire blocks flattened as though scraped clean by a giant hand. Despite the National Weather Service issuing warnings 24 minutes before impact, a lead time many would consider generous in the unpredictable world of tornado forecasting, the Joplin tornado still claimed 158 lives and injured more than 1,100. Sirens blared, but the bitter irony is that in Joplin, many residents never heard them. Their desperate wail was no match for the tornado's unholy roar, a freight train of wind and debris that silenced everything in its path, including the very system meant to save lives. The aftermath was apocalyptic. Nearly 7,000 homes and 500 businesses reduced to splinters, $2.8 billion in damage, and a shattered city left to mourn in the ruins of what once was. In the aftermath, Joplin became a case study for emergency management and disaster recovery. The community rallied with resilience, and today, the city has rebuilt, but the trauma remains etched in memory and in policy. New building codes were enacted, tornado response plans were re-evaluated, schools implemented safer shelter strategies, and survivors, many of whom lost everything, carry stories of loss, courage, and neighborly heroism. The U.S. may be tornado central, but it's not alone. Our kind, patient neighbors to the north aren't exactly off the hook. Canada sees around 80 tornadoes a year, mostly in the southern prairies in Ontario, making it the second most tornado-prone country on Earth. While they tend to be less intense than U.S. twisters, Canada has had its share of devastation. The 1987 Edmonton tornado killed 27 people and left a scar that's still remembered today. So yes, even in the land of maple syrup and politeness, nature still packs a punch. You might think tornadoes are a North American exclusive, like deep fried butter or high school prom, but they're not. Unlike your sister who just discovered boundaries, tornadoes don't believe in them. In fact, the deadliest tornado in recorded history didn't strike the US at all. It hit Bangladesh, far from Tornado Alley, and left devastation on a scale that still haunts the region. In Bangladesh, tornadoes have caused some of the deadliest disasters in recorded history. The Dalitpur Saturia tornado in 1989 killed around 1,300 people in a single day. That's nearly nine times the death toll of Joplin. Poor infrastructure and lack of early warning systems made escape nearly impossible. In Argentina, Europe, and parts of South Africa, tornadoes also wreak havoc, though less frequently. These regions often lack storm shelters, making even smaller tornadoes disproportionately deadly. As urbanization increases in vulnerable zones, so do the risks. Now here's some good news. We're not just sitting ducks. Smart siren systems can now pinpoint tornado warnings to individual neighborhoods. Safe rooms built into homes are made with materials that can stop flying debris traveling at 100 miles per hour. New architectural designs use aerodynamic principles to deflect wind around structures instead of letting it tear through them. New high-resolution weather models like Warn on Forecast are helping predict tornadoes with more lead time, sometimes up to an hour in advance, instead of the usual 10 to 15 minutes. Even satellites are being upgraded to capture atmospheric conditions minute by minute. And in development, machine learning systems are being trained on decades of storm data to recognize patterns even veteran meteorologists might miss. The goal? A future where communities get life-saving alerts faster with fewer false alarms. But progress doesn't run on hope alone. Even AI is lending a hand. Doppler radar is now being paired with AI to track storm cells with stunning precision. And storm-chasing drones are being tested to fly into developing supercells and feed real-time data straight to forecasters. It's helping meteorologists issue more accurate warnings faster buying people the extra minutes that could mean the difference between life and death. So what can we do to slow them down, or maybe even stop them? The short answer, nothing. However, scientists believe we may have inadvertently made them stronger. Chaos, meet climate change. 
As global temperatures rise, so too does the energy in our atmosphere. Warm air holds more moisture, which feeds stronger thunderstorms, aka the nursery for tornadoes. Data shows tornado outbreaks are becoming more clustered, more intense, and shifting eastward, putting new regions at risk that traditionally didn't worry much about tornadoes. The Trump 2.0 administration dealt atmospheric scientists another devastating blow when it made the ill-informed decision to slash federal spending by over 40% at key agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Under Energy Secretary Rick Perry, dozens of climate-focused research programs were gutted or stalled. These were just academic pet projects. They included advanced supercomputing initiatives designed to simulate severe weather with frightening precision. When budgets get gutted, so do breakthroughs, and the price for that delay could be counted in lives. Climate change isn't just melting glaciers or bleaching coral, it's twisting through our skies and ripping through our towns. Who we vote for matters. What policies we push for matter. Ironically, the regions most affected, America's tornado alley, lean very red and are often the last to take climate change seriously. A true puzzlement. But this isn't about politics. It's about physics, about life, and about giving future generations a shot at blue skies that don't come with a warring tornado the size of Texas. It could happen. The next time the wind howls and the sky goes green, remember, we're not powerless, but we do need to act before the storm hits. Thank you for watching. Moving forward, we will be posting new videos every three days, so keep an eye out. And remember, so what if a twister rips up a cornfield? When you feed on fats, you'll never go hungry.